Yikes. No wonder I'm exhausted. <laughs> Thanks, Bob Lee, who we go back 30 or 40 years. You're doing a great job. Uh, I feel tonight like I'm in a galaxy far, far away. Alana Campbell. Can we have a little round of applause for putting that together? Thank you, Alana. I love you. Really. Because mostly I will tell you a quick Al Michaels story when I became the first woman on Monday Night Football. Al really despised the Clintons, and he was so happy during, well, you all know Al. He was so happy during the Star Report, and so we were doing a game in Green Bay, and I had to interview Bart Starr, and it was the rare time in my journalistic career that I didn't care what Bart Starr said, because at the end of it, all I did was say, there you have it, Al, the Star Report. <laughs> And Al, it was like the greatest moment of Al Michaels' life, because he just <laughs> could not stand. And Connie Cooper Smith, one of my friends who's here tonight, worked in the Clinton administration for eight years, and even she laughed at that story. Uh, I, I knew I was a strange child, you know, when other kids would dress up on Halloween as Mary Poppins or someone from The Sound of Music, and I would go as the great Celtic guard Sam Jones. You wonder why my mother, you know, was in the back, knocking back the bod, because it was pretty weird. You know, I had my high-cut comms and my 24 shirt. But uh, it, it led me to here, and um, for that I am thankful for my passion and, my, and the challenges of sports. And to echo both John and Bill, two of my oldest friends, great friends, uh, I feel like I've either worked with everyone in this room or I wanted to work with everyone in this room. And I was fortunate that um, I did NC eight NCAA tournaments with you, Bill and Vern, and I'm going to tell that story that you don't like. Yeah, well, okay, <laughs> not away. And the great thing about um, John Walsh, in case I'm sure many of you have spent many nights in Peacock Alley with him, but the greatest thing about John Walsh is the first question he always asks you is, what are you reading? And I have stolen that from him because what a great read on people, you know, to say, what are you reading? It really tells you. So I remember I used to lie to him. Oh, I'm reading the entire uh, history of the Civil War. <laughs> you know, I'd be reading some Danielle Steele thing, right? <laughs> but I would lie to him. But um, to the entire broadcasting family. Thank you, Ken Agard. Thank, thank all of you. When Ken called me, I, th I thought he had the wrong number. I was like, you've got to be kidding. But uh, I thank everyone I've worked with, most of you in this room, because I always say no one lands on Normandy by himself. And I have been blessed. There have been four men that I credit my career to, and three of them are in this room tonight. I started with the great Vince Doria at the Boston Globe. And Vince took enormous chances on me. And Vince, Vince was one of those bosses, have you ever had, maybe John Walsh was this, but Vince could give you the worst news and, and you left his office saying, wow, that's great. Wow, that's really great. Like, I, I, you know, I remember I read that about Roy Halladay, that whoever your favorite player was, his favorite player was Roy Halladay. But I can remember going into Vince's office and he said, ah, eh, you don't want to go up in the cold to Lake Placid. You don't want to do that. You know what? You're going to stay in Boston and do indoor box lacrosse. <laughs> That's right. And I said, those slobs going up to Miracle on Ice. Right? Who, needs, right? Who needs that? I'm going to do indoor box lacrosse. <laughs> yes, you did, Vince. So anyway, that was, so Vince is here. And then Ted Shaker came to the Boston Globe, and he said, we can get women who know television, but not women who know sports. So we would like to hire you. And Ted gave me, thank you for coming, gave me enormous, um, he gave Suzanne Smith her first start. I think he was the first person, John Walsh, <laughs> who hired John Walsh. But he gave me enormous opportunities. This is the 25th anniversary of the Super Bowl in Minnesota. And um, Ted uh, had me do the Vince Lombardi trophy presentation. And I can remember we were sitting in the production meeting, and there was Brent. Congratulations to Brent also. Um, there was Brent and Terry Bradshaw, all the people who do the post game. And Ted said, 
Okay, now we've gotten to the post game, and Leslie Visser is going to present the Lombardi Trophy, and everybody's mouth, including mine, fell open. <laughs> I go, what are you kidding? What are you kidding? But uh, Ted, it was really an honor to work both for and with you. And so Ted brought me into CBS, and then the great Sean McManus, as Bill pointed out, the great Sean McManus has kept me there when a lot of the business became younger and blonder, and and he kept, he kept me there, and he kept hiring me, and he believed in journalism. And through it all, I've been with Barry Frank, my agent. Thank you, Elizabeth and Barry, for coming. Barry gave me the best advice I ever had in my career. He said, if it interests you, it will interest the audience. He said, you're smart enough that you'll know that if you're bored, they're going to be bored. <laughs> so he said, just make sure that uh, it interests you. The fourth person couldn't be here tonight, the great Les Moonves, but he sent me a beautiful note. So three of the four people in my 40-year career are here, and I, I thank you all for that. Uh, like both John and Bill before me, I'd like to congratulate the other honorees. Uh, I did eight tournaments with Vince and Billy, and here it comes. He, Bill doesn't like when I tell this story, but in my 40 years, this was the single greatest moment on television. We always, in the first round, we always got Penn. Penn always, always was our first round. So we were on the air, and Bill came up with some nugget about Coco Archibong. So Vern said, Coco Archibong? Where'd you get that? And Bill says, oh, oh, oh Vern, the things you learn late at night. To which Vern, without missing a beat, said, by that standard, I must be working with Socrates. <laughs> it was the best moment in the history of TV. And I don't care if you don't like it. <laughs> it was hysterical. But I mean, I even I got to introduce Stan Honey in Las Vegas. Um, Chris Berman's here. I met Chris Berman at the sixth game of the 75 World Series. That's how far we go back. Um, Mike Wiseman, I think, came to both my weddings. Oh. <laughs> is, that okay to, is that okay to say? Oh, sorry about it. Um, I would like to thank, uh, thank those people who joined me. My, my great husband, Bob Knuth, who, whoever thought I would marry a captain of Harvard basketball, but thank you, really. Anyone who knew me cannot believe that, but thank you. Um, my brother Chris, uh, thank you to Suzanne, my eternal director, and her wife, the Contessa. Thank you for coming. Uh, you guys have been the wind beneath my wings. Uh, thank you also for the table from We Need to Talk, that uh, how great is CBS that they took the chance to put together an, an all-sports women's talk show. Isn't that great? Thank you, really. They took the chance. Thank you, Amy and Julie and Emily. You keep me honest and afloat. And uh, my old producer, Terry Schindler's here. Thank you, too. So I'd just like to finish with something that's been really big in the past few months. And this is not going to get any headlines, but I think this is the time to say it. And this is the room. And you are the people I want to say it to. That of those four men that I mentioned, uh, Sean and Vince and Ted Shaker and Les Moonves, not one of them sexually harassed me for one minute of one day of one year. And I, I thank you. As, uh, as Robert Frost said, and that has made all the difference. So thank you, I am humbled.